So is there anybody is there anybody in the audience who is from Greece? Right. So am, am I correct? I've been in Greece for two days now. Am I correct in understanding that if you start at five past ten, ten past ten, quarter past ten, that's okay. You're not like, like we have to be there at ten o'clock because dinner is ten o'clock or breakfast. Okay, cool. I like that. That's. <laughs> but I've actually already started, haven't I? <laughs> um, so that's, that's a very Cape Tonian way of doing things as well. Cape, Cape Tonians are very like chilled about time. Um, we, do, we do have two hours. Um, I'm, I'm somebody who enjoys an interactive workshop. I don't like to stand up here and present and everybody sits and listens and just codes. I like a very interactive workshop. So if you want to ask questions, if you want to tell me I'm stupid, if you want to say something, that's totally fine. I don't mind at all. So that's me. I'm Jonathan. Uh, as I mentioned, I'm from Cape Town in South Africa. I used to write code for a living, and now I don't. And that's why I've got a big smile on my face. <laughs> um, I'm a sponsored contributor to Automatic, and so what that means is Automatic pays for me to work with the training team, the WordPress training team. So who is here for Contribute Today yesterday? Awesome, awesome. Um, so the training team, we work on a platform called Learn WordPress. We create tutorials, we create workshops, we create lesson plans. So if you want to learn WordPress, you can go there. If you want to teach WordPress, you can go there. If you want to come and point at me and laugh at what I'm doing, you can go there. <laughs> um, <clears throat> and that's my personal, my personal blog, jonathanbossinger.com. Um, if, if you want to chat to me online, that's the best place to find me. All of my, all of my contacts are there and all that kind of thing. Um, before we get started, I have been in Greece for two nights now, and I've been to Bolivar Beach Bar twice. And, and, and you folks know how to party. And as you can hear, my voice doesn't. <laughs> so I'm a little bit croaky this morning. I do apologize. Um, <clears throat> so when, I, when you read the title of this workshop, Developing Blocks Using Plain JavaScript, what were your initial thoughts? Anyone? Why? <laughs> Somebody say, why? Why not? Why not? OK. When, when you hear the term plain JavaScript, what do you think? Plain, what, is, what, is plain, what does plain JavaScript mean? No, no React, no, no dependencies, OK, no React. Vanilla, yes, vanilla. So <laughs> at, at, the, at the, the social last night, I was having a very interesting discussion with a French friend of mine, uh, Deb knows him, Pierre. Um, about is there a difference between vanilla and plain? And I, I am of the opinion that vanilla is a flavor, but plain, plain is flavorless. Okay? English is a weird language. <laughs> so I have a small confession to make before we get started. The title of my topic is a little bit of what the Americans call a bait and switch. Who knows what a bait and switch is? That's where you go, here's a chocolate, okay, a little bit of a bait and switch. Um, and, we'll, and we'll get into it in a second, and, and, and I hope that some of you will argue with me and we'll have that discussion, that's what I'm looking forward to. Um, but when I, when I think about developing blocks with plain JavaScript, I think about no dependencies. I think about no JSX. I think about not having to install an extra piece of software to write some JavaScript code. I think about writing JavaScript code, uploading it using SFTP or whatever your FTP file is, and it just works in the browser. Would we agree that is a, that is a, a, a pretty good explanation of what, what plain JavaScript could be? Would anybody disagree with that? Okay. So let me guess, you're all originally PHP developers, right? <laughs> my people. <laughs> So my, just very briefly before we move on, my, <clears throat> my history is very much a PHP history. Um, I, I did a programming diploma after high school, got into writing or developing Windows applications, um, <clears throat> and then, and then fell in, discovered the world of the web, discovered PHP and MySQL and HTML and CSS and JavaScript, 
Um, but to me, you, you, wrote, you, wrote, you wrote in the text editor or whatever you were using, you uploaded the files to the server and it all just worked. And that's what I loved about it. Uh, I loved the fact that I didn't have to create an executable uh, or compile my code, I just uploaded and it just worked. And that's what I loved about what I saw as web development. <clears throat> so as we mentioned earlier, pros and cons. The pros are you don't need to install Node.js and NPM for, for what we're going to do today. You don't need to worry about running build steps and, and all those things and watches and things like that. You don't need to worry about a massive node modules directory that you then have to include in your git ignore and make sure it doesn't get committed and all of those kind of things. There are, however, some cons, and we will get into that as we go through the workshop today. Your code is slightly more, and I use the quotes around complicated because when you start writing it in a second, you'll see why. <laughs> and it also requires a little bit more manual work in, in getting everything set up and putting it all together. And one of the reasons that I want to teach folks to learn to build blocks without JSX is so that you can agree with me that it's much easier if you use JSX. And that's the bait and switch. So my goal today is hopefully to show some of you, my ex-boss is here, no, no pressure. <laughs> uh, hey, Craig. Um, hopefully to show those of you who want to build blocks that yes, it is possible, but in my opinion, it is not something I would want to do every day. Okay, can you please, if you would like to, open up your browsers to the block editor handbook at developer.wordpress.org slash block editor, how to guides, block tutorial. Um, while you're doing that, can I just do a quick check? Anybody here who wants to code along with me today, throw up your hands quickly. Okay, the rest of you, you're welcome to be here. You don't have to code along with me, but you're not allowed to ask any questions. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Um, those of you who want to code along with me here today, do you have your local development environment up and running? Okay, is there anybody that still needs to get their local development environment up and running? No. Excellent. Well, we're going to finish up early today. <laughs> okay. Is, any, is anybody still getting, getting this, this documentation up? Does anybody still get there? Is everybody ready to go? All right. <clears throat> so, the only tools that you need today if you want to code along with me are a local WordPress development environment and a code editor. I won't be using VS Code and <laughs> WordPress Playground extension today. Yes. Can you show the yes, certainly. Uh, there. Um, I had planned to use, uh, who, who has heard of, the, of, of WordPress Playground? Okay, a few of you, right. So I had planned to use it today, uh, but due to a lack of planning on my part, I forgot to get, to, I didn't get to the point of setting it up in that environment, so I'm using my default local environment. Um, but the, those are the only tools you need today if you want to code along with me. Okay. Um, <clears throat> anybody else still need the slide or can I move on? Happy to move on? Yes. Let's start writing some code. Okay. So, there is usually a five minute waiting time while I increase the font on my, on my code editor so that everybody can see it. But let's start with that. Can everybody read that or do I need to increase that font? Can anybody, can anybody not read that code? Make it a little bit bigger, okay? Perfect. I'm so glad that PHP Storm has include the, included this increased font size on all editors option. It makes life so much easier. That's the one thing I wish um, PHP Storm had that VS Code has is just command plus. Du, 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 du. Right, how does that code look? Can we read that? Everybody? Okay, excellent. Right. <clears throat> so, if you have never developed a plugin before, who has, who has never developed a plugin before? A couple of folks. Okay, that's, that's great. So, we'll do a bit of plugin dev today as well. <laughs> awesome. I want you to open up <clears throat> your local WordPress environment that you're going to code with today in your editor. I want you to browse to the WP Content Plugins directory. And I want you to create a new directory there. You can call it whatever you want. I'm going to call mine WP Learn Lean Learn WCEU 2023. While I'm doing that, I'm going to open up <clears throat> the same documentation that I asked you to open earlier. And maybe pour some water. That might be a good idea. <clears throat> 
All right. <clears throat> if you're on this uh, block tutorial, at the bottom of the page, there's a create a basic block link, which takes you to the next page. I'd like you to go there, please. And then we'll start here at step one by configuring block.json. So if you need to get there, please do get there. So this is so this is from so this is from the original link. This was the the how. So if you the other way to get there is to go to well let's walk through it. So you go to developer.wordpress.org. You click on the build blocks link, which is the third item along the top. You click build blocks, and then you click the little down arrow next to how to guides. And now I've forgotten where this thing is. Um, sorry, blocks. Sorry. This has, been, this has been updated recently, which is why I'm struggling with, there we go, blocks, there we go. Okay, so this is the blocks page, is everybody there? Okay, and then if you scroll right down to the bottom of that page, you can click on the create a basic block link, and it takes you to the create a, ba create a basic block page. <clears throat> That's where we're gonna start. So, <clears throat> I like to, <clears throat> sorry, my throat is still, <clears throat> I like to include a bit of humor in my, in my, in my workshops. And an, a friend of mine is, is married to a lady from Cyprus. And I, and I said to him, I would like to do a Greek, I would like to do a, some kind of Greek joke. And they, they say that the jokes that you have to explain are probably not gonna be funny, so I don't expect you to laugh, because I, I have to explain this. But he said to me, well, why don't you, when you stand up, why don't you say to folks that I, I know a little Greek, so I'll, I'll, I'll try. I know, I know a little Greek. Her name is Helen, and she lives in Cape Town. Um, you see, it's not, it's not funny when you have to explain it, is it? Okay. So if you're going to develop blocks without using Node.js, without using NPM, there are some files that you need to set up in your plugin directory to get things going. Before we get to PHP, we need to set up what's known as the block.json file. So if you scroll down on the create a basic block, you'll see there's step one, configure block.json. <clears throat> and basically, <clears throat> there are multiple ways that you can specify your attributes and your block names and all those kind of things. The block.json file is the easiest way to do that, okay? So I'm going to go back to my editor. I'm going to go into my plugin. I'm gonna create a new file. And I'm gonna say block.json. So there's my new block.json file. Who has never coded a JSON object in their life? You, okay, let's put it this way. Who has coded a JSON object? Okay, so now I've gotta try and spot the folks who haven't put up their hands. Who knows what a JSON object is? Okay, so a JSON object is like a PHP array, in a way. Um, it has a specific syntax, and then you specify key value pairs, and it's a very simple thing. So if we go back to the configure block.json file, if you scroll down a bit, you'll see there's this uh, create a basic block.json file there. <clears throat> and did you notice the JSX and the plain toggle? Has anybody used that toggle before? <laughs> That's why you're here today. I'm gonna just teach you how toggles work. <laughs> it's, it's really that easy. So if you click on the plain toggle, you'll see that it's, it doesn't change much. <laughs> but there are some slight changes. Um, the one just has the ES next, next to the name, the other one doesn't. So I would like you to copy out that code and pop it straight into your block.json file. <coughs> and if you're wondering why we need two hours, it's because I go really, really slowly like this. So if I'm going too slow, please let me know, because that will be a first. <laughs> Usually I go very, very fast. Okay. So in the block.json file, we specify the API version. That's the, the block editor API. We specify a title. I would like you to change that title to whatever you would like it to be. So I'm going to say, <clears throat> I can't even spell today. Jonathan's block. And then the next one is the name. <clears throat> now. 
when, when you think about writing PHP code, if you are using classes, you don't tend to do this. Maybe you do. In, PHP, in, in WordPress, you might not, but if you're coding in something else, you might. There's a concept known as namespaces, where you namespace your code. Um, and basically, when you create your block name, you use a namespace and then the name of the class. So the Gutenberg example section is the namespace, and the example 01 basic is the block's name. So what I would like you to do is I would like you to create your own namespace and your own block name. I'm going to go with <coughs> WCEU, and I'm going to call it my form block. All, right. All going well, we're going to create a form block today. It's going to be very simple. It's going to be very ugly. <laughs> we don't have time to code a very pretty, we don't have time to recreate gravity forms today. Um, but the idea is that we learn how to do this and hopefully you can take it and then you can expand on it and you can go and style it and you can add new things to it. That's, that's hopefully the idea. <clears throat> the next three elements are the category that it belongs to. And that's basically, if you open up the site editor, you've got that where you can click uh, the plus and all the buttons come up and they're in different categories. So that changes that category there. We can leave it as layout for today. I'm quite happy with that. The next one is the icon. So the icon is one that you can choose from the uh, WordPress dash icons. I'm sure we've all used those in the past. Um, I actually have some code somewhere else that I want to just quickly open up here. Um, <clears throat> give me a second here, please. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. Block JSON. So I'm going to use the media hyphen code uh, icon today. Media hyphen code. So let's go back there and let's pop that in. You're welcome to leave, leave yours as universal access, alt, or whatever it is. I'm going with media code. And then your editor script, you'll see it, 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 it's a file, and the file is called block.js. So for 10 points, what's the next file we're going to create? Index PHP, who said index PHP? Who was that? I love that. Who was that? No, I want to high five you. Who said that? Yes, I'm going to high five that. <laughs> the espresso is kicking in. Um, okay. So create your block.js file, please. So in the, in the root of your plugin folder, let's create the block.js file. There it is. We're gonna, we're gonna put some JavaScript in there in a second. That JavaScript will not require transpiling, it will not require dependencies, it'll just work in the browser. I love seeing the smiling faces when they say that. All right, <clears throat> let's go back to the documentation. Step two says, with the block.json in place, the registration of the block is a single function in PHP. So we get to write some PHP code, folks, we do. And, 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 then, and then we don't anymore. <laughs> okay, so I would like you to copy this PHP code out of your, out of your documentation. And I would like you to create your, your plugins PHP file. And as you all know, that can be the name. I, I prefer to go with the name of the, of the block folder as my PHP file, but I, I seem to recall you can also just have an index PHP if you would like. Um, but I'm gonna go with WP learn WPCU 2023. And there's my PHP file. And I'm going to paste that code. <clears throat> and is there anybody here? And, and please, this is not a feel, don't feel bad if your answer is no. But is there anybody here who has never hooked a callback into an action hook? Okay, I can see you're all PHP people. <laughs> right, so it's a, a very basic action hook callback. Uh, we're hooking into the init action, and then we are registering our block code. So what I would like you to do is change the callback function. I'm going to change mine to match the name of my plugin slug. And then I'm just going to go register block. <clears throat> I'm going to change that. And then you'll see what it's doing is it's calling this register block type function, which is the PHP function to register the block type. 
And all I'm doing is I'm, or all the code is doing, I'm not doing it because I copied this code, is it's passing in the PHP dir constant. Uh, so if you don't know what that does, that basically returns the path to the current file. So in, in my case, it'll be path to my WordPress install, WP content, plugins, WP Learn, WCEU 2023. So that's what all that, that does. The other thing I would like you to do, and you're welcome to argue with me on this, but I prefer, this is a, this is a personal preference from a readability point of view, I prefer to have my action registration above the callback function because when you read that code, you go, what's happening? I'm, I'm creating a hook, I'm calling this function, where is the function? It's just below it. That is a conversation that I had with those of you who know Tanya Mork, uh, from WP Developers Club and know the code. Uh, that is the way that she codes her action hook callbacks. I much prefer it, so that's what I do it. Doesn't, it's not right or wrong, it's just a personal preference. <clears throat> okay. The next step, if we go back to the documentation, is we need to create our block, edit, and save functions. So again, we click on the little plain tab and we copy code. So, so here's a little secret. Um, if you want to go and do this workshop by yourself, you just just go through and copy the code from the docs. <laughs> like re read the manual. That's what I'm saying. We're going to dive in a little bit deeper. We're not going to just stick with the code. That's the first part. Okay. <clears throat> what we need to do, though, and I apologize, I need to blow my nose, so I'm going to do that. <laughs> Too many mojitos last night. We need to understand what this code is doing, right? We can't just, we're not just copy pasters. We're not just stack overflow copy pasters, right? We want to understand what we're copy pasting. That's kind of the point. So, say again? No, okay. <clears throat> so what this code is essentially doing is, it is, this is what is known as a, I'm going to forget the name now. Uh, it's I-I-F-E, I think it is. Uh, I can't remember the full name, but it basically means when this, when this JavaScript code loads, trigger this function, right? The other way you could do this from the jQuery days, you would have your jQuery on document loaded or whatever it was, and you would call a callback function, and then that callback function would run your code. That's essentially what this is doing. So there is no function name defined because this is, those of you who, who know this from PHP land as well, this is an, an anonymous function, which means it doesn't have a name, and the reason it doesn't have a name, it just doesn't need a name. I'm not gonna be calling it from somewhere else. I just want it to fire once this JavaScript has loaded into the browser. I want it to fire all the time. So that's why it doesn't have the function name. It just has the function declaration, and then it, it accepts the blocks and the elements uh, arguments. <clears throat> then at the bottom, you'll see there's it's, pass, it's passing the window WP blocks and the Windows WP element components to this automatic anonymous function. So window WP blocks and window WP element are other JavaScript files that are running when WordPress loads. And here's the dirty little secret. Those are your dependencies. So dependencies are not just things that you have to install and run when you're developing. They're things that are available when WordPress is loaded. Because... WordPress can't expect you to have to have all those files and do the thing it needs to allow for what we're doing today. So blocks and element are dependencies that when you install uh, what's it, WordPress scripts, when you set up that whole build environment, those are some of your dependencies that you need. But they're always available. In a, in, in a WordPress instance, they're always available. <clears throat> so it passes blocks and elements to this function so that they're available. And then the very first thing it does is it creates an instance of the element.createElement function, basically, or what's known as React as a hook. So what I would like you to do to make your life a little bit easier is change that el to create element, right? I, ju I just find that more readable. El means nothing to me, <laughs> but create element means something. I'm creating an element. Then the next step is it uses the blocks component and it calls its register block type method, or it's a class, if you will, or object. And notice what it does. In the, it passes in the same name with the same namespace and the same block name that we set up in the PHP file. So what do we think is the next step that we need to do? Change that. So let's go ahead and do that. No, it wasn't there. It was in the block.json. 
<clears throat> there we go. And that has to be the same. So whatever you register in the block JSON has to be passed to the register block type function. <clears throat> then it sets up the edit function and it uses create element. So you'll see there's two instances of EL there. So I want you to replace those with create element. And essentially what it's doing is it's creating a DOM element with a tag of P, so it's a paragraph. The, the, the empty object there is any attributes for this thing, so things like whether it has like ARIA attribute, any, any of your typical HTML tag elements would be passed in there. And then the third parameter is the content or what's, what, what the children are of this element. So in HTML terms, what this is doing is creating that. Do we agree? Does anybody disagree? It's not a trick. I just want to know. I want to make sure everybody agrees. Okay, so that's what that's doing. And then in the save function, it's essentially doing the Spanish version of that, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, is anybody Spanish here? Is that Spanish? Excellent. Excellent. I'm Cape Tonian. We have two languages. No, we have 11 languages, but you can only speak them in Africa. So um, the, the only one we can speak in Europe is, is, is English. Um, and so in a block environment, if you've never developed a block before, the edit function is what renders in the editor. And the save function is what gets saved to the database to then render on the front end. Okay? Does anybody not understand that? Some of you have probably seen that concept in the JSX stuff, um, but that's how a basic block works. Shall we test this? Who wants to test this? Okay. This should theoretically just work. Uh, no, it shouldn't. I lie. <laughs> I missed the last most. I always forget this one. Always forget this one. Those of you who don't like dependencies, step four, build or add your dependencies. I would like you to notice that the JSX one says NPM run build, okay? And this is where most PHP folks go, huh? <laughs> right? So we click on the plane. <clears throat> and the plane says, create an asset file to load the dependencies for the scripts. So what, is, what does this kind of look like when we look at this PHP code? Does anybody see if something, when, when we think about loading JavaScript and loading dependencies for that JavaScript, does anybody see something familiar? Does anybody remember WP NQ scripts? And then, you, and then you NQ your JavaScript, and then what is that one parameter that's an array? It's your dependencies. You have to tell WordPress that when the script loads, I am writing some jQuery code. So make sure that J, remember jQuery, you have jQuery in the dependencies array? Make sure jQuery is loaded before you run my code. Or what happens? It all breaks, right? I can, I can tell the old school developers, because when I go jQuery, they know it. <laughs> and the newer folks are like, jQuery? <laughs> all right. So that's what we're doing here. That's how building blocks using plain JavaScript also works. This file, when, so let me take you back one step. When register block type runs, it goes and looks for this asset file, this asset.php file, and it says, okay, those are my dependencies. So I need to wait for the WP blocks dependency, the WP element dependency, and the WP polyfill dependency to be loaded in WordPress before my code is fired. Can anybody see something interesting about the dependencies there and what's being passed in that, in that um, automatically executing function we did earlier? Anybody spot that? Polyfill's missing, number one, but the other two are? The same, WP blocks and WP element. WP blocks and WP element. So that's how you manage your dependencies in a plain environment without the build step, okay? Let's talk about polyfill. I'm not gonna go to the documentation now, but polyfill is basically the thing that fills in the gap between your code and blocks and element, <laughs> okay? So when you're building blocks without using JSX, without using the build step, you have to have polyfill as well. All right, every single time, which is why it's included in the documentation. So, now that we know what this does, now we can copy paste it, right? Because now we know what it does. We don't copy paste without knowing what it does, right? Right, right. <laughs> Should I hope so. Q 
Okay, so let's copy that out. And it's a block.asset.php file. So let's create that. Block.asset.php. Okay. Before we move on, I would like you to, if you don't have somebody sitting at the table next to you, right, please don't do what I'm about to ask the rest of the folks to do. And I'll explain why in a second. The rest of the folks, if you have somebody sitting at the table next to you, if you don't know this person, I would like you to turn to them, introduce yourself to them, say, hi, my name is whatever and where I'm from, and then say, thank you for pair programming and helping me test. <laughs> okay, those of you who don't have somebody sitting next to you, you have a slightly more difficult job. You need to get up and go find somebody and introduce yourself, somebody else not sitting with someone next to them, and say, would you like to come and sit with me and thank you for helping me pick, program, and test. Because we're going to be helping each other today. Okay. Please go ahead. Why don't, why don't the three of you work together? You guys work together. Okay. Okay. Cool. There we go. There's another chap there. There we go. Perfect. Excellent. Right. Okay, does, every, does, everybody have, does everybody have their rubber duck? Does every, who, who here doesn't know about the term rubber duck? Okay, a ru a, you don't, okay. So in, get everybody to, to I love the fact that you're chatting, but let's, let's slow down again. Let's bring it down, let's bring it down. I mean, we can carry on talking for the rest of the workshop, I don't mind. I'm here for the next hour and a half. Okay, so in American, in American software development, there is this term known as a rubber duck. So when you, no, it's fine, they can go. They'll miss the rest of the workshop, I don't mind. They registered, not me. Um, there's, there's, this, there's this concept of, a, of rubber ducking, where you, you don't have somebody to speak to, so you have a little rubber duck on your desk, and when you're trying to solve a hard problem, you explain to the rubber duck what the problem is you're trying to solve. And in doing so, your brain, in the, in the process of explaining something, your brain switches from learning mode to teaching mode. And in doing that, your brain often will find the problem while you're teaching. Right? So what is the best way to become a better developer? To teach. To teach. Okay? Buy a rubber duck. But that's a good option. Okay, right. Okay, does everybody have their, their, their peer programmer? Does everybody have their partner? I would like you now to fire up your WordPress dashboard, find the plugin that you've created, activate it, and add it to a page somewhere. And let me know, let, no, not, not let me know, let your partner know if you get stuck, and see if you can help figure it out together. And I will be roaming around and helping folks out, and we'll do that for the next five to 10 minutes until everybody's got the plugin up and running. Let's go. Maybe I should test mine first. When in Greece, we must speak Greek. So can you change hello world to... Oh, yeah. Oh, awesome. Thank you.
Perfect. Thank you. Thank you so much. Who said refer to browser? Okay, who, who doesn't have a working plugin right now? Whose plugin doesn't work? Okay, whose plugin does work? Can I get two volunteers of their plugins who do work to come and help the folks who don't? Anybody? Yeah, there we go. Ah, oh, there's my friend from yesterday. Oh, let's come and help these folks in the front here. They, they, they've got a struggle. Let's, let's get everybody on the same page. Those of you whose plugin is working, I would like you to change the, the hello world. So you'll notice I've changed mine to, to be in Greek. Thank you to my Greek friend over there. I would like you to change your save component from Spanish to whatever language you speak and see if you can get it to render on the front end. If you're Spanish, your job is done. <laughs> okay. So I want, you to go, I want you to go into your save function, change from hello, hola mundo, I think it was, to whatever your language is, whatever language you speak, and get it to render. All I want you to do is get it to render in preview on the front end. That's all I want to get you to do. Okay.
All right. Can I get everybody's attention again, please? So we did have one, we did have one valid bug that came up today. Um, I'm not going to mention who it was, but somebody had named their, their block.js file blocks.js, and so obviously it didn't load. Fair enough. Um, but otherwise, everybody seems to be on board. Okay. Well, that is a block, in my opinion, written in plain JavaScript. Would you agree? Yeah. Okay. So we're done. Go. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. All right. So <clears throat> the next thing that I would like you to do, um, let me just check my notes. <laughs> Sorry. Um, this is another problem when I have things in different places. So let me close that. Uh, and let me. No, 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 projects. No, I can't. There we go. Okay, workshops. There we go. All right. So, create element. Let's talk about create element. <coughs> um, who here has seen JSX code? So you've seen, you've seen some JSX. It's very similar to HTML in a few ways. Um, it's unlike HTML in the fact that you have to use what's known as DOM attributes and not HTML attributes. So for example, you use class name instead of class to define your, your classes. Um, but as I mentioned earlier, when you are using this create element function that WordPress provides for you, which is essentially just a wrapper around the React create element function, you are essentially creating a DOM element, so a paragraph tag, a div tag, a whatever the case may be. We'll get into the how you add nested and all that later, but let's, let's talk about this empty object. With your page that you added your block to, I would, I will, I will give, <laughs> no I won't, I would like you to remove the block from the page. <laughs> First person to remove the block from the page, please put your hand up. Okay. What did you have to do to remove it from the page? Go to the classic. Go to the code editor. You can't click on the block and remove it, right? The other way you could do it is you could open up the list view and you can remove the block from there, but you can't remove it from the editor area, which is probably the worst user experience in the world ever, right? Okay, so. Who here has heard of block props? Some of you have heard of block props, okay, great. There is a React, so, okay, let's ask another question. Who here has heard of React hooks? Right. Who here thinks they understand React hooks? <laughs> Way less, okay? Who here would agree, those of you who do understand React hooks would agree, it's basically just a function that does a bunch of things, right? That's essentially what it is under the hood. You're calling a function, it does a whole bunch of pre-populated things, returns some things, and, and that's essentially what a hook is. So let's just call it what it is, a function, right? We know functions. We create functions, we, send, we call them, they send us back data. That's what a hook is, essentially. Um, so there is a, I'm just gonna <clears throat> find the documentation for that. So there is a, a hook in WordPress called, uh, I'm not gonna find this. Wait, 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 wait. Block hooks, there we go. Bridge uh, mm, block type, there it is. No, it's not, I'm not gonna find it. Anyway. <clears throat> so there is a hook in React called use block props. And that's a special React hook that's been set up in WordPress that does a whole bunch of fun, magical things. We don't have time to dive into what that does in depth today. But I would like, you sh I would like to show you how to add it as your dependency and how to use it. So, uh, let's go back to this one over here. 
here. Okay, I'm going to do some command line y things here. Um, that one. Check. Uh, No, not version one. Sorry, folks. Give me one second. <clears throat> version two. There we go. So use block props is a hook on the same block editor, on, on the block editor components in WordPress. So just as we passed in blocks and element, we need to pass in block editor as well. So let's go back to our code. So who here can guess what that dependency is going to be called? Copilot knows. <laughs> okay. It's going to be w window .wp block editor. And it's block editor in, I think this is camel case. So the E in editor is an uppercase E. Block editor. That's what it looks like. Window WP block editor. So with that added to the, the, the list of arguments that we're passing into our automatically executing function, we need to accept that in the function declaration. So up here we can go block editor. Obviously, no, I don't want that. <clears throat> Obviously, we don't have to call it block editor. You're, pass, you're passing something to a function. You can call whatever the variable is, receive it, anything you want. I could call it be if I wanted to, but I'm going to go with block editor. Ignore the, the empty object next to that. That's copilot being weird. Um, I don't quite know why it's not going away, though. So let's do... Anyway, and then what you can do is you can do this. You can say use block props. I'm going to actually turn Copilot off. Um, let's just label those for now. It's still there. <laughs> anyway, it's not obviously not Copilot. And it will be block editor use block props. Okay. So ignore, ignore this colon and the empty JSON thing there. I don't know why it's still showing. Ignore that. It's just block editor. We're just receiving it. And then we're saying use block props. Right. So now we, what we've essentially done here is we've created a variable called use block props, which is an instance of the block editor use block props function. So I could just use block editor, use block props everywhere. I could do that as well. But I like to have a simple, shorter version to use. So we use use block props that way. So now I need to extract or import or whatever the block props from use block props. So this is what it looks like. Uh, block props, use block props. So inside of your edit function, we can create a new variable, block props equals I can't remember now. Use block props. So I'm basically calling the function and then receiving whatever it returns. Right? This is all, this is all JavaScript code we, we understand. And then I want you to update the empty JSON object there with block props. And what that essentially is, is it's a, a JSON object that gets returned with a whole bunch of predefined things that WordPress does for us. We're going to inspect that in the console in a second, but I want you to just get this far so long. I'm just going to switch back to my other code editor. I'll come back here in a sec. Just check something. Yes. OK. Does anybody need me to stop and have a look at this code and get themselves up to date, or is everybody along with me? OK. Cool. Then we need to do the same thing inside of the save function. So we can just copy that block props, and we go use block props. And the only small change we need to do here is we need to call the block props save. Because there are certain things that we want happening in the editor that just calling use block props will give us. And then there are certain other things that we only want happening, or specific things that we only want happening on the front end 
that save will give us, okay? And then again, we do the same thing. We update the attributes with the block props. And it's basically just a bunch of properties. It's, a, it's an object of properties, that's all it is. While we're here, let's see what is inside of, of block props. So can anybody guess what my next line of code is gonna be? Maybe console dot log or debug. <laughs> We've got, got the debugging king here. Console.log, console.debug, console.table, whatever, whatever you prefer. I'm going to go with a very simple console log. And I'm going to log block props there. Luca, you're welcome to use whatever you prefer, my friend. <laughs> so, Luca, Luca, I don't know, but I know his work. Um, and it, 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 it's kind of scary to me that he's at my workshop today. <laughs> I should be at his. Okay. So when it, when it renders in the editor for the first time, we'll inspect the block props and see what happens. And then when it saves in the editor, we'll see those block props as well and what happens. All right. Everybody up to speed with me? Do I need to pause for a second? Okay. Now, now we can start testing this code. No build step. None of that. It's ready. The only thing we need to do, and I met, I met the gentleman yesterday, but I've forgotten his name. We need to do what? There's no building of dependencies, but we will need to refresh our browser, <laughs> okay? What you can do if you would like to, um, who here remembers cache busting from the old days? Remember cache busting? What did we used to do? We used to go? Change the version to? Remember? Same thing, okay? I think. I think uh, WordPress has time, I can't remember, but I use MK time, same thing. It, it, for those of you who don't know, MK time generates a timestamp. So it's a series of numbers. So every time you refresh your browser, that timestamp updates and the JavaScript is refreshed in the browser cache. So you're always getting the latest version of that code. This is, this is an old school um, development trick that we used to do before we had like right click and clear browser cache and all that kind of stuff. Remember, to change that when this code goes to production. Because you don't want this happening in your production environment. Um, okay. So with that happening, let's go back to our page. We'll, we'll take this away. And let us refresh. And depending on what you have on your page, one of two things might happen. It might just refresh. Or it might give you some kind of issue. Mine says deprecated MK time in the top there. <laughs> I think it's supposed to be time these days. I don't have, I don't have um, my logging enabled, so I'm trying to copy out this message and just see what it's saying to me. Uh, you should use time, okay, yeah, I, it was time, I was right. So instead of MK time, just use time, sorry about that. MK time has been deprecated, that's how old I am. <laughs> um, so let's refresh this, and you should see some kind of error possibly like this. Does anybody get this error? Okay, that is, that is not a bug, that is a feature, <laughs> all right? Because when we passed in the block props, we changed elements of the markup that is being rendered. And the way, the way the block editor works is once that save function runs, it renders that markup and then stores it in the database. Then when the block editor loads, it loads the edit function, but it also checks against what's been saved in the database. And if there's a problem, it throws some kind of issue like this. So this is expected. So you're welcome to keep it as HTML or whatever the case may be. By switching it to keep HTML, you can then remove it, which is great. Uh, and then let's do another refresh. And it's still there, it doesn't matter. Um, and now, if you add your block, it gives you an error. It's giving me an error anyway. Um, and I'm trying, to, I'm trying to remember why it's giving me that error. <laughs> Yes, and, 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 and why is that? I just remembered why that is. Dependencies. So you still have to manage your dependencies. Great question. Um, so it doesn't matter, so, sorry, what was your name? Nikos. Nikos. Nikos's question was, does the order, this list of dependencies order, does it matter? And it doesn't matter in terms of it loading for your thing to work, but it does matter if you want a specific dependency to be loaded before your code loads. So I tend to, I tend to try and make sure that my dependency array 
is in the same order as it is in the, in the JavaScript code. It doesn't, it's, not, it's not that important, but from a readability point of view, I find it to be a better thing, but it's not really a requirement. So as Nico said, we need to add this to our dependencies. So it will be something like WP, and I think it's, let me just check the code here. Um, <clears throat> I'm gonna just cheat and go, go back to the example code. I think it is just block editor. I can't for the life of me remember. There we go, WP block, WP hyphen block hyphen editor. WP block editor, there we go. So it's been added to our dependencies. Wouldn't it be easier if there was a way for these dependencies to just be updated because we use it in our code? Wouldn't that be great? It's called, it's called the, NV, the NPM build step. That's all the build step is doing. In your JSX code, when you go import uh, use block props from block editor, and you run npm build, it then is building this file for your plugin. Just saying. Just saying. Because we, we love automations, don't we? We hate writing all the code. We love things that do it for us automatically. Okay. So if we refresh that. Attempt to recovery. I'm going to just remove that one. And refresh again. Okay, it gives you this attempt block recovery and that's because of the save story. So let us preview this. And that seems to still be working, as far as I can tell. The difference is now when I click on the block, I have the little toolbar at the top. Does everybody else see that? When you click on your block, the toolbar appears. So just by enabling use block props, all of that functionality is added for you by default. It doesn't look like a lot of functionality now, but it adds other things. So let's have a look at our console and see what is being used. So I'm going to take this over here, and here are those objects. So here is the one in the, line 13 is probably the save, and line eight is probably the edit. So let's open that up. <clears throat> so inside of block props in the edit, there is the ARIA label that automatically gets applied, so accessibility out of the box. The class name is set up for you, and I have heard people complain about the massively long class names that the block editor generates, and I agree. They are long, I agree. But you can then use, and you'll notice the block name is the same as we defined it in our block.json. At the end there, WP block, WCEU form block. So I can now hit some CSS, and I can target that, that class, and I can style my block. There is a data block attribute, a data title, a data type. It's got an ID, and various other things are added to it. And if we have a look at the one in the save method, you'll see it just has the class name at the moment. That's all it has, because that's all it needs for the save. It doesn't need the ID and all those things, because that's only necessary when you're moving things around in the editor. But if you have a look, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make this a little bit smaller. If you preview this block and you inspect this code, you will see that that class has been applied to your paragraph. Do you agree? Okay. Awesome. So now we also need, so now we know how to develop a simple block. We need to know, we know, we know how to create an element. We know how to use use block props. Now we need to go and say, well, there's all this documentation about all the various components that are available. The, let me go back one step. Let me go back a few steps. The create a, the create a basic block how-to guide has that very cool switcher. So you can see the JSX code and you can see the plain code. But the rest of the documentation doesn't have both code examples. So we need to be able to understand the JSX side and be able to implement it in our vanilla side, right? So in the documentation, there is a, something called a rich text component. Who here has seen the rich text component? Some of you have seen it, all right? Um, 
And if you're going to use it, so in this instance, there is the JSX code, which is great. And let's actually have a look at that code. So I'm going to expand, uh, it doesn't expand it nicely. Let's collapse it. I'm gonna just copy out the, the render method, the return method. And I'm gonna just pop it in the code here. So this is going to break, this is not going to work. But that's what a rich text element looks like with some, some, some block props and a tag name and various other things. I'm just gonna take all this other stuff out so we make our lives a little bit easier. And maybe we should keep the on change. Uh, let's do that one, let's do that one. Yeah, no, I, I'm not gonna run this, don't worry. <laughs> okay. Um, so that's our JSX. So this is what JSX code looks like, right? Return, and then it has, <coughs> excuse me, it has an HTML-like style to it. Open tag, rich text. You see it has the block props object that we've, we've just done, we've done that already. And then it has other things that can be applied to it, other attributes. And it has an on-change me method and various other things. Probably my wife. Um, so we would like to know how do we do this plan, right? Like, if the, if the documentation is all in JSX, how do I, in my brain, convert JSX to plain JavaScript? Okay. So, sorry, was that a question? No. Okay, cool. So, the important things, so what are the important things that we know about these components? They do have a dependency that is available to us in WordPress. We can set them up in our JavaScript code. We can pass them to the function. We can also then set them up in our dependency list. So let's have a look at this JSX, and I'm specifically not switching over to the plain version, but let's have a look at the import at the top. I'm actually gonna grab all of this, and we'll stick it in a file, and we'll kind of translate it on the go. Um, so let me take this out. I'm going to open up a scratch file. Okay. <clears throat> so at the top, we've got the import statement, and it's importing the rich text component from where? Block editor. Have we seen block editor before? Cool, so we're already using that as a dependency. Excellent. If we weren't, what would we do? We would go to our block.js and we would add block editor. Now notice that in the original code, it's using the, the package name like that, and you don't necessarily know that it's block and then editor with an uppercase E. Here's the trick. Anytime it's hyphenated in the package name, it's always camel cased in JavaScript, always. Okay, so you can always trust that. I've tested it, all right? Um, if it doesn't, let me know, because then there's a bug. <laughs> so, but if it wasn't, then we could, we could add it to our, our list of variables being passed to our function. And then just like we're doing this over here, we can do the same thing. We can say var rich text is block editor. And then let's have a look at that code. It's just rich text. So just like it's used block props and it's create element. Uh, let me just double check this before I lie to you. Oh wait, wrong version, sorry folks, there we go. Yeah, block editor rich text. And that's simple enough, right? That's straightforward enough, okay. Now the hard part comes in. <clears throat> what I would like to do is I would like to create, I would like to change that paragraph container to a div container, or at least, sorry, I wanna restructure, the, I wanna restructure this layout. I wanna have a div. Inside of the div, I want to have the rich text. And then below the rich text, I want to have my hello world text, uneditable, that's what I want, that, that's what's in my mind. So let's code that out quickly in HTML so we understand what it looks like. Yeah. So I want a div. Then I want whatever the rich text does. So I'm just gonna pseudo code this for the moment. I'm gonna say a rich text. And it's gonna have some value. And then I want the paragraph tag with my hello world. And then I need a closing div. Do we agree that is, besides the rich text part, that's valid HTML code? Yeah. All right. So how do we do that with create element? 
Well, what did I say create element does? It creates a single DOM element. I also said that the third parameter in the create element function is the, the content, but I also said the children of your element. So in this example, which are the children of my div? Rich text and the hello world. Those are the children. So bear with me while I live code this. This is the first time I'm doing live coding in a workshop. So it might go wrong. As we all know, we all code perfectly the first time. I know, I know you all do, right? It's never a mistake the first time. No spelling errors, okay? But this is what it would look like. Yeah. So there's my, my parent div, right? And what I like to do is I like to start putting my, my div, my, 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 my tag, my, my properties, and my children underneath each other. I just find it more readable. So instead of doing it on one line like I have on line 15, I'm going to now start putting things underneath each other. So block props. Now what? Can anybody guess? An array? Okay. Create element? Okay. Let's have some fun. Everybody put your hands up if you say an array. Or an object, Java, JavaScript object, the same thing. Okay. Anybody who agrees with create element? Less people say, okay. Say again? Code pack. Oh, call, oh a callback, sorry, apologies. Languages. Callback function. That's also good. Anybody says callback function? Okay. Create element. Because I want another DOM element. Okay. So where does my where does my my paragraph go? You don't have it. Don't have it. Two, children. Two children. There you go. So I can have more than one child of a parent element. So I can just go comma. Create element. Yeah. And then I can set it, specify my paragraph. I don't need the block props here because the block props need to work on the container for the removing. So this can be an empty, empty object. And then hello world from the editor. Okay. And I can do that multiple times. So if I wanted to have a form in here, I could add a form create element. And then if I wanted inside the form, I wanted an input box, I would then create another create element inside of the form create element. And at the end of the day, this is what your code ends up looking like. So here we have create element, creating a parent div, passing in block props, then creating the next element, which is the rich text. Then creating the form element. Then inside the form element, I'm creating the div inside the form. Think in HTML. You can imagine this, the div inside the form, which has a form group class name. Then it, sorry. Uh, it has a label element, because a form field needs a label. And next to that, there's an input element with a name and a type of text. And, sorry. And Mac OS is trying to update my software. Go away. And you're basically, think, thinking about HTML, you're basically using create element every time you need to create a new DOM element. And if you need to have it nested, you have create element nested inside of create element. And you have all of this code, all of that, all of that. How much fun do you think that is to write? <laughs> yes? Can I use append child? Can you use? Append child. Append child. I don't know the answer to that. Um, should we find out? I've never used a pen child, so 
I'm going to have to do some more. No, no. Oh, I see. Okay. So how would you use that? Pen child. So you create the... So you append child to something. So it looks like you can, yes. Looks like you can do that. All right? Never tried it. No, I can give the complete domain API. I think so, yes. Okay. So if you're comfortable with that, that should also work. I've never tried it. I'm like most most of the other folks here, yeah, I'm an old school PHP guy. <laughs> so so what I'm trying to say is it is possible. And then you you then need to sorry, what was your name? Mario. Mario. So you then need to go into things like a pen child and learn all of these JavaScripty things. Or you can write your edit method. So it looks kind of like HTML. Like wouldn't you want, wouldn't you rather want to write your, your create elements like the, your create elements and your pen childs like this? Yes, please. Now that I've shown you how it is possible in JavaScript, but it is a little bit uncompli com uncomplicated, un complicated, isn't the price of just installing Node.js and NPM worth that code? Now here's, now here's where, it, so I don't think I mentioned this up front, and if I did, I apologize. I am very tired. <laughs> um, as I mentioned earlier, I've done, I literally, I landed on, what are we today? Today's Friday. I landed on Wednesday at 5 p.m., Went straight to a dinner at Bolivar Beach Bar, which if any of, any of you have known, the party only kicks off at 12.30. Um, came back, contributed day yesterday, then went to another party at Bolivar Beach Bar. So I'm tired. So if I have already told you this, I apologize. I've forgotten. But my title was a little bit, did I say bait and switch? Did we talk about bait and switch? My title today was a bait and switch. My goal here today is to show you that yes, it is, you see, I did forget, that's how tired I am. <laughs> it is possible. It, everything is possible. But why would you want to do that to yourself? You know? Why would you want to spend all that time thinking about the HTML and then converting it into create elements and the pen children and all that kind of stuff when you can just write this? And it gets, it gets even better. Um, this is the... So this code is all available. If you want to, if you want to grab, and it's in a very, a very um, sort of work in progress state. But if you want to grab this code, it's on my GitHub profile. My name is Jonathan Bossinger, the same as my 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 name. Um, and it's it's probably gonna it's it's number repository number two hundred. So that's a bit of a celebration. Okay. Um, it's called WP Learn WCEU twenty twenty three. Um, and if you switch the branch to version one zero three you have the whole code. So let's, I'm gonna open that up quickly on the screen um, and we can have a look at that. It's not gonna be pretty, but it'll give you an idea. Um, so tell me when to stop making it big, if you can all see it. Is that fine? Is that good? My friend at the back, awesome. So there I am passing in blocks, elements, and block editor, which we know. I'm also passing in the components, so all of the WordPress components that are available. There's use block props, rich text. Then I'm using block controls and block alignment controls. Um, registering the block type, the form block. Setting up the edit function. Setting up some, some functions when things change to receive the new update and passing those around. And then, the, and then all the fun happens down here with all the, all the, all the multiple nested, nested create elements and, and we keep going, and maybe a pen child would make it a little bit shorter, but it's still calling a whole bunch of code, doing a whole bunch of things. And then I have my save function, and I have all of that code there for the save function. And, and wouldn't it be nice if I could take like the form, which is the same code every time, and extract it into a, into a file that I could just include or require, my PHP friends, into my main file, right? But I can't do that in vanilla JavaScript. It has to all be in one big long file. Whereas, if I'm using the build step, if I'm, if I'm using the transpiling, I can, I can, where is that code? There we go. I can take, for example, this entire form and move it into its own file, create a form, my own custom form component, 
and then just imports it into my, into my main block file, my main edit file. This, this code, if you look at it, you'll see that in the index.js, which is the main uh, the version of our block.js, it imports edit, save, and metadata from other files. So it's similar to PHP's require. So JSX is actually more like PHP. <laughs> Truth. You can do things like import files. You can move things in. We, don't we love compartmentalizing reusable code? We love that, right? We want to have our code that we, we, we want to have dry code. We don't want to have to have the edit form and then the save form and it's the same code and we're repeating it over and over again. JSX allows you to do that. So, yes, it is possible. Yes, you can do it. No, I don't want to write code like that. Okay? I want to write code that is clean, easy to read, easy to work with. And so for me, and I'll be brutally honest here, for me, the biggest hurdle was I need to install this new piece of software that I've never used before. I need to learn a couple of command lines, command line things. I need to, I need to get used to something called a file watcher, which is this magical creature that just runs in your terminal and does things. And I'm, I'm the kind of person that doesn't like, I don't like having more than one terminal open. It's just a thing, I, I don't know why. And so I suddenly have to now have two terminals open because the one needs to be running the file watcher or if you, can do, if you want to do it in, a, in your IDE, you could do that as well. But the one needs to keep your file watcher running and then your other one you can actually use as a terminal. And I still struggle with that. <laughs> but the benefit, the, the time saving, the clean code, the dryness of my code, the benefit of doing it that way overrides my aversion to having two terminals open. So yes, it is possible. And no, I don't want to write code like that. Okay. That is the crux of my talk today. Um, there is a whole form that I built. You're welcome to download the code. The point of today wasn't to dive into that process. So what I would like to show you though while we're here is that um, you can create your own custom code if you will. So if we look at this create element setup that I've got over here, let's actually take this out. And if I wanted to add this form, for example, below the paragraph, it would either be create element or append child or something like that. But, and this is not documented anywhere in the WordPress docs, but it probably is somewhere on MDN or something like that. But I can just say create a form. So this will create a form element. And maybe I want, and I'm going to turn Copilot uh, co on now because it's going to help me quite a bit. Um, and I can pass in maybe a style and I can give it a border or whatever the case may be. Uh, let's say one pixel solid red. Because re remember how we used to debug HTML back in the day? Whether it was the right size. So Copilot at least knows that. <laughs> um, and then inside of the form I want to create the div. So I would then create element and or the label or the, the first the wrapper div and then I would create the label and so on and so forth um, and and this just gets really old and really boring really really quickly okay so what I would like to do now is I'm going to switch over to the predefined code that I have here so that's my so what I did is I created the first one which is the vanilla way and the plan was actually to have a REST API endpoint and we were going to post the REST API and I was just like, no, that's just that's too much. You're PHP developers, you know how to post the REST APIs. Um, so I built the block in JavaScript, in plain JavaScript, and it's, and it's all this code, all of this code. And then I built it in JSX and it's all this lovely clean code. And if we, if we load it, hopefully I haven't made changes to any of that. Um, Looks like I have. Oh, it's because I know what I've done. I know what I've done. Hang on one sec. Uh, I need to check out version three. There we go. Um, <clears throat> let me do a quick refresh. And then we add it. And that is a form block written using this JSX way. 
and then let's load up the other one. And there is the JSX one. I don't know if you can see it over there in the corner. And yeah, it's the same thing. Same to the, u to the user, it's the same. I'd much rather work on the code for the second one, <laughs> personally. Um, so it's worth, it's worth it. It's worth getting over the build step. And literally all you're doing with that build step is it's automatically generating, essentially, that block asset file that loads the dependencies. That's, that's essentially all it's doing. Because all of those dependencies are already part of WordPress. When a WordPress install launches, they're already there. It's just automating that process. It allows you just to say, import that package and start using the code. Write the JSX code and then, and essentially what the, the build step does is it takes all the JSX code and turns it into the vanilla code that we just wrote. So it automates that whole process for you. So why wouldn't you want to use it? Any, any, any opinions against that statement? So, so I've been successful is what you're telling me. <laughs> okay, and that's, and that's really what it boils down to. Yes, and I'm gonna repeat myself. <laughs> Yes, it is possible, and yes, using things like a pen child will probably make it easier, but it's way easier to go the JSX route. It's way easier to get over that step. It's way easier to have that process in place, understand a little bit about how that process works. The first, the first thing that I, that I hear from developers when I, when I speak to them about this, is, yes, it's this node modules thing, and when it breaks, it's horrible to try and debug, and you know what, you know what happened, you know what I do when, when, node, when node falls over? Do you know what? I just nuke my node modules folder and just run npm init again, let it reinstall everything. It's, it's literally the Windows restart solution, and it works. Um, there is a little tip that I want to give you uh, before, we, before we end up for questions. There is something called NVM. It's Node Version Manager. And what's great about NVM is it allows you to install specific versions of Node on your system or per project and I highly recommend there is a, so here's where I get a little bit salesy, <laughs> if you will. Um, on learn.wordpress.org, there is a tutorial that this, this weird person with a much better voice than mine called Jonathan Bossinger created. Um, and it, it's, it, there's, a, there's a package in, in the WordPress in, in Gutenberg called Create Block that once you have Node installed, once you have NPM installed, you can scaffold everything that we did up front. Remember the Hello World stuff, all of that? It'll scaffold all of that for you. So all of that code will generate it for you. Another win, and then you can build your block from there. Um, and this tutorial, using the create block tool on learn.wordpress.org, steps you through the process of installing and setting up this, um, the NVM, Node.js, and all of that. What, it, what also exists in this tutorial is that I have set up installation instructions. Because I am an operating system nerd, I have Mac OS and Windows and Ubuntu on separate machines in my office. Because there's no, there's no, there's no point in saying, just go and install this, just, just run brew install. And, and Linux folks are like, well, maybe, maybe not all Linux folks, but some Linux folks are like, what? And Windows people are like, run? <laughs> Uh, Windows Terminal? <laughs> so I've set up installation instructions for uh, Mac OS or Linux and Windows. Um, I, I found if you're on Windows, I, I, I don't have a problem with that, not at all. I'm not one of those uh, operating system, I'm, I'm, I'm operating system agnostic. Uh, you use what you need to use that makes you the best developer you can be. Um, I found that using PowerShell and the chocolatey package manager on Windows was the best way to set all these things up. I do find it very interesting that the, the package, the, the third party package manager for Mac OS is Homebrew, which has beer connotations, and the third party package manager for Windows is chocolate related. So what we're basically saying is Mac people like to drink beer and Windows people like to eat chocolate, apparently. Um, but I've set, up, I've set up all the installation steps for that. And if you can just get through this tutorial and get this stuff set up on your machine, then all the hard work is done. And then you can just go ahead and write the beautiful, clean JSX code and import your files and create your components and not have to worry about this horrible mash of functions calling functions calling functions, okay? So if I, if I leave you with anything here today, in fact, what I should have done was 
watch this video and save yourself two hours and go hang out in the expo area. Um, but I wanted to show you that yes, it is possible. And again, I'm gonna repeat myself, but no, I don't want to do that. Go and check out the user create block tool video. I don't get like sponsorship or credits or anything from you watching this. There's no affiliate links or whatever. That is the benefit of what I do. I'm sponsored to create this kind of content. Go and check it out. If you don't have it installed on your environment, get to the point where you have it installed. If you hit a snag in the process, please ping me in the Make WordPress Slack. It is literally my job to help, literally. I would love to help you get it set up. I would love you to be able to live in the world where your block code is easier and cleaner and wonderful. I would love that. I don't have all the answers as we learned today. I've never used a pen child because I've, I learned the JSX way. Um, but I'm sure I'll find somebody who does have those answers. But my recommendation is play with the vanilla way. If you want to, if you want to check out, so I am on social media, I am on Twitter, uh, or on my blog. I'm, after this event, I'm going to post a blog post at jonathanbossinger.com with all of these links and all of these details, so you'll be able to get everything there. Go and check out the example code that I've created and see the two different versions. Um, go and read up about NVM, go and watch the video, and then if you hit snags, let me know, give me a shout. Finally, what I wanna say, who, who here has a smartphone? <laughs> right? Who here, when smartphones first came out, were like, I don't, I don't like these things, it's too invasive, they're tracking me. Who, who here doesn't like all the tracking and all of that that happens when you have a smartphone? But you still use it, right? Okay? So sometimes we have to, sometimes we have to step out of our comfort zones. Sometimes we have to go, you know what? I'm going to adopt this new way because it makes my life easier at the end of the day. Um, sometimes we have to go, it's okay to have two terminals running. It's okay. We'll just, we'll just bump up our memory and it'll be fine, okay? But if you can get over that hurdle, if you are struggling to get over that hurdle um, because you, you like being able to just write the code and push it up to the server and all that kind of thing, I highly recommend giving it a try and then let me know how it went. Is there anybody here today who walked in and they were against trying out the JSX way and they're now reconsidering it? No. Is there anybody here who was happy with the JSX way but they were just curious to see what the plain way was? Okay. Okay. What did you think? Did you, did you like the plain way? No. So why were you curious? Maybe the? Maybe the build process is different. Okay. Anybody else? Okay, so, got it, got it. So my, my understanding, and, I, and I'm not, I'll be honest, I'm not a JavaScript developer, I'm a PHP guy. Um, you know, JavaScript is always, I would use on the front end to do some cool things, maybe some Ajax and that kind of stuff, but I'm not a JavaScript developer. But my understanding is that because you're using the WordPress scripts package when you're building your, your projects, it is designed and developed to what they call transpile your code into completely cross-browser compatible. In fact, there's, there's a higher likelihood, in my opinion at least, and I could be wrong, so if anybody wants to correct me, they're welcome to, but in my opinion, there's a higher likelihood that your code will be more cross-browser compatible by using the NPM build step because it does transpile your code down to all cross-browser situations. Whereas if you're building it in vanilla, you might stumble across some solution somewhere that's using like a newer, a newer version of the JavaScript, the, what's it, ECMAScript standard, and you might use something that isn't cross-browser compatible. So there's a, and then you have to go and make sure that you don't use that, you use something else. So in my opinion, there's a higher likelihood that you'll write not cross-browser compatible code if you go the JavaScript way. 
um, versus using, using the build step, because it will transpile your code into something that is cross-browser compatible. That's So J JSX is is a is a is a let's call it a templating engine. Do you, re do you remember Blade templates? PHP Blade templates. Do you remember those? And Smarty. There were Smarty templates as well. That's essentially what JSX does. And then in the build step, the the compiler takes that JSX and and compiles it into the plain JavaScript code that is cross-browser compatible. So that JSX is never running in the browser. Um, it, it compiles it to code that is cross-browser. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Any other questions, comments, suggestions, opinions? Tell me, telling me I'm stupid. Anyone? <laughs> yes. Oh, sorry. There's a mic. Sorry, there is a mic. Um, thanks for the talk. It was great, and I think you very much made your point. Um, <laughs> Are you tired of it now? <laughs> um, the the two biggest things for me that you know put me off trying to you know build blocks and that sort of thing. Uh, one is ESNX or ES whatever syntax. It's like see the three dots or whatever, I have no idea what that does. I, you know, I've read documentation, I still have no idea what it does. And the other thing is um, WordPress updates have a tendency to break things, especially with blocks. Hmm. Um, like I've lost track of the amount of times I've built a block, updated WordPress, and it doesn't work. Um, so do you have any suggestions as to, um, I don't know, how to be a better developer? Good, good question. So if I could, if I could start my answer with the question, what are you using to build your blocks? Um, I was originally using Zach Jordan's build script okay. in his course. Um, I recently started using the, um, the like WordPress, um, like one that the build script package okay. that WordPress has, but okay. like I've only picked that up in the last few months. Okay. So, my understanding, and again, if anybody here is from Core or from Gutenberg and knows better, but my understanding is, is when WordPress updates and breaks things, that's WordPress breaking things. That's not necessarily your code. Because if you're using the, if you're, if, if you're writing it in vanilla, it's probably going to break as well. Because that's something that, we're, so WordPress is constantly, that's good, we, we all know this project is constantly moving fast when it comes to Gutenberg. And that has its pros and cons. But they're going vanilla, what I showed you today, versus going with the JSX, you're not going to, it's not going to break less, if you know what I'm trying to say. Uh, that's just an unfortunate case of when the new... I have, I have never allowed my, my personal blog to have auto-updates on. Um, I always updated myself. When, uh, that's just the way I've been my whole life. I'm like that with my operating system. Um, I, I used to run Ubuntu before I switched to Mac because of work. And I, and, and I run what's known as the LTS version, the long-term support version. And the, long, the new version comes out, and I wait for point 0.1 to come out before I upgrade. And that's just the way I do things, and that's the way I do things with WordPress, and that's the only way you really... In fact, with the last release, you had to wait for point 0.2, because point 0.1 broke uh, blocks in, in themes. And that was a WordPress problem. That wasn't a how you're building your blocks problem, if you understand what I'm saying. Um, then your, your, the question that you had before that was... Um, I've forgotten now. Oh, not understanding the syntax. Yes, so on that topic, I want to show you something very quickly. Um, we're not going to have time to actually code this, but you're talking about sort of this kind of thing here. Yeah. Right, so, so do you know what that is? That is, that is just this. That's all it is. Passing, passing a parameter to a function and then doing something with it. That's all, that's all it is. Oh, sorry, hang on. Sorry. Not far. That one. That's all it is. So just write it like that. There's no, there's no reason that I can't write my unchanged content function like that. The new, the new syntax is just... Are there any... Are there, are there any folks here who are like hardcore JavaScript developers? I'm about to say something that might upset you. It's my opinion, personally, not the, not the opinion of the WordPress project, it's just my opinion. I don't like that top syntax. I don't, okay? I like this one, because it's a function. That's its name. That's the parameter I'm passing it, okay? That's just a personal opinion. That's how I write my functions. There is nothing wrong with writing your unchanged like the bottom version. 
the new version is just for the newer folks. It's, 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 it's less doing things, especially if you don't have, if you don't have a, a parameter that you're passing it, there's an even shorter version. So it's just writing less code. But there's nothing wrong with writing it that way. So you can, you can write, and I've done this, you can write your whole block using standard function names like that um, and just have the JSX part in the render. And the standard JavaScript will still work. No problem there, for sure. Okay, give it a try. Cool, anyone else? Any other questions, comments, opinions about my hair or lack thereof? Yes, I think there's a mic if you wanna just, sorry, I forgot about the recording, I apologize. So, I don't know the answer to that. Um, I don't work with the Gutenberg team, so I don't know what is planned there. Um, I'm, I'm gonna, is, is Craig still here? No, good. Um, I used to work for Delicious Brains when they acquired ACF. Um, I'm a PHP developer, primarily. Um, I love, I love the folks at Delicious Brains. This is not a slight on them. I love Elliot, the original developer of ACF. This is not a slight on him either. I personally don't like the ACF way that blocks work. I much prefer this way. Um, because you're trying to, in my, again, this is the, the opinion of Jonathan Bossinger. Not my company, not the WordPress project, my opinion. It's my workshop, I can have my opinions. Um, <laughs> You're, you're trying to, there's an American term called shoehorning. Does anybody know that term, shoehorn? So when you want to stretch your shoe out, you put something called a shoehorn in and it stretches your shoe out and you have to really shove it in there. Um, I believe the ACF blocks thing is a bit of a shoehorning situation where they're trying to force something into something else that shouldn't really be done that way, personally. That having been said, because I used to work at Delicious Brains, I do know that those developers at Delicious Brains are trying to make that process a lot better, a lot quicker, a lot faster. Um, but it won't, be, it won't be something that the WordPress project does. Um, Matt is my, my CEO, and he is the project leader. But this is my opinion. Again, this is not coming from Matt, but he did tell us to learn JavaScript deeply about six years ago now. Um, and, and there's a reason for that. And, I, and that would be my recommendation as well. You don't have to learn it deeply. But just understand the basics. Understand how the JSX works. Understand how you can write functions that aren't the new syntax. Um, and get used to that environment. Because one of the, one of the, um, the negatives that folks have about WordPress is it doesn't move with the times. It doesn't, it's not modern. It doesn't move forward. And accepting granted a Facebook framework in, in React as, as the framework for, for Gutenberg, while um, difficult for some, was of a net benefit. Because now you have folks that can go and work at Shopify. I mean, I'm, I was talking to somebody yesterday who has taken his WooCommerce and React experience and is building Shopify stores and WooCommerce stores. Um, so. So in my opinion, again, getting used to this functionality, getting used to how this works, it just, it just opens your horizons. Um, it opens your mind to different ways of doing things. It expands your capabilities, your job prospects, all of those things. Um, and it's fun. I enjoy, I enjoy writing JSX code. It's really, really fun. But it's not slower. Say again? It's not slower. Slower for, so for development or? So, so I've never, I've never built blocks with ACF, so I can't actually say whether it's slower or not. I find it to be very fast for myself. Um, that's a tough one. Is it, is it slower because you're more comfortable with ASF? Uh, ASF. ACF? Okay. 
Okay. Okay. That, that, that's a fair point. Um, right. Okay. I'm with you. I'm with you. So what I do know, so what is probably a good thing to check out is this create block tool that I was mentioning. Um, let me just share the, the package. Uh, sorry, let me find it here. Uh, Gutenberg. So in the Gutenberg repository, there is a packages folder, and inside of packages is create block. Uh, where is it here? Create block. And create block does more than what I just talked about in the, in the video. Um, it has something called, uh, where is it now? It has something called a template. So you can set up templates when you're creating a block and automatically generate block code. Uh, so I would say, if anything, it would probably be in this, in this project, this tool. If, and here's, here's the fun part. We all know it's open source, right? Those of you who were here yesterday at Contributor Day, you all know we can contribute to this. Wouldn't it be amazing if everybody went, everybody who was working on ACF went, hey, let's see if we can update create block to be able to pass in npx create block dash dash form dash dash input name input email submit button and it just generates that code for us. That would be cool, right? So I don't know whether the create block team is going in that, in that route. I'm sure they would love to hear from you if that's what you want. So, so hit them up on the GitHub, maybe create an issue, maybe see if it's currently possible. And if it isn't, let them know, and maybe they'll, maybe they'll build it. Um, because ultimately, what do we want? We want tools that make our lives easier, right? That's what we want. That, that's why you like ACF. It makes your life easier. So if we can take the tools that we have that create this JSX for us and make them easier and faster and we can build things quicker, then we can all go make more money. And isn't that the best way to do things? Right? Okay. Some of us don't want more money, and that's cool, but you know, making more money is cool, I think. Um, so, yes, I don't know for sure whether there's a path there, but that, that might be something to investigate. Okay, cool. I, ho I hope that answered your question. If it didn't, I apologize. Um, but it's not something that I have knowledge of in, in my head. Any other questions, comments, issues? Cool. Awesome. Well, thank you for joining my, my rambling uh, journey down creating plain JavaScript blocks. I see only a handful of people left, so clearly it was interesting, uh, or you have nothing better to do. Um, if you find me, at, I'm here for the next two days. I'm going to go find coffee now and hopefully something to eat soon. Uh, but you're welcome to come up to me and ask questions. Um, I'm, not, I'm not the best at understanding different dialects, so you might have to bear with me. Um, but you're welcome to ask me questions. You're welcome to DM me in the Make WordPress Slack at any time if you have further questions about any of this stuff or anything you're... If you're learning anything, my job is literally to help developers learn new things. So if you want to learn this stuff and you're getting stuck, let me know, please. I would love to help you. Um, otherwise, enjoy the rest of your WordCamp, and I'll see you at the after party. Yes? Okay, thank you very much. <laughs>